Hi, Dudley here from the Turtle Emporium. Just uh, making a video for you today. We're going to talk about cooters, cooter turtles. So, uh, in the UK, in about 2016, they banned the import sale breeding of tracking the scripter, the yellow belly sliders. So, into the UK came this flurry of little cute little green turtles that dominated the pet trade. Uh, generally, they were cooters. Now, cooters are a species of freshwater turtle that come from North America. Uh, predominantly the United States, down the southern eastern side. Uh, there, are, there is a species as far north as Michigan and New York, the uh, northern red belly cooter. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. And there's one species found in Mexico, the Rio Grande cooter. So, let's talk a bit, a bit about them. So, the name, Pseudomese, that is the Greek or the scientific name for a cooter. Pseudo meaning false, emes is the freshwater turtle. So they were named after a false freshwater turtle. Um, and then we, they move on to the different subspecies like Conchina, um, Peninsularis, River Ventris, etc. Depending on what part of the country they're from or their particular um, characteristics that they have. So that's the, the scientific name of them. The um, common name, cooter, um, is spelled C O O T E R in everyday use English language but actually comes from an African word kuta k-u-t-a and I'm going to apologize to any people out there who speak that particular language of my pronunciation but that was brought into North America by African slaves who uh, that, that is that that word kuta is, is their word for turtle in Africa that's where the word comes from um, they are one of the largest uh, species of freshwater turtle, particularly in the United States. They do grow very, very large, up to about 16 inches. So I'm doing man measurements here, so it's 16, about 16 inches. So you're talking a big turtle, of 35 pounds that can weigh. Um, and they, they really are huge. So to talk about them, there's uh, about nine different subspecies. There are some slight um, scientific discussions over which ones are which but we can generally classify them into three different types. So, there are the pond cooters, the river cooters, and the red-bellied cooters. So that they're your general three different types. And I've got a couple to show you today. So, um, the, the main two species are the river cooters and the pond cooters. And they differ. So the, the pond cooters, which um, are peninsularis, Pseudomys peninsularis, a peninsular cooter is a good example, are a big freshwater turtle from slow moving um, lakes and ponds and they have a high domed carapace um, and, and they're great for manoeuvring in those slow moving bodies of water. Um, I don't have one here to show you but if you look back on my Facebook we did do a, a rescue of one um, last year, Big Bertha, she went off to a lake, she was a, she was a great example really huge. Um, the, the river cooters such as the um, Pseudomys conchina which is the eastern river cooter they are more streamlined and smoother. Conchina meaning uh, smooth which relates to their smoothness of the carabase. So we've got some uh, examples here. Now I was talking about the pet trade earlier on and people buy these small baby cooters. Uh, generally they're about so that big perhaps the size of a 50 pence in a pet shop not very expensive, uh, green and yellow, very cute. So within about 18 months, um, <coughs> you're going to get something like this. So this is a Sudanese Conchina, uh, Eastern River Cooter, probably 18 months to two years old. Um, they, their diet is primarily uh, plant vegetation. Um, as babies, they're quite omnivorous, so they'll, they'll, they'll eat protein quite happily. Uh, but they'll also, uh, unlike a lot of turtle species as babies, they're ravenous for greens. So you should, should still try to keep them at 50% sort of plant matter, even as babies. This one's got some slight um, bumpiness to the shell, the carapace. That's just from too much protein uh, and too rapid growth as a youngster. Like I say, 18 months to two years, you've got a turtle that size. Now to most people, um, that is plenty big enough an aquarium no one really wants or a lot of people as pet keepers don't want a turtle much bigger than this so when they get into this size people are starting to worry um, I'm going to show you now an adult
So here we have um, a near fully grown uh, adult female Sudanese Conchina Eastern River Cooter. And she's a lovely turtle, she really is. You see the smoothness and the streamlined of that of the shell. It's more oval, if you look at it from above, it's more oval than um, one of the Peninsularis sort of pond cooter types. Um, and, and that is so that she could easily swim uh, along the river current, so she can she can move in strong flowing waters. Whereas the pond cooters don't need to do that, so they can they can be wider and, and fatter. Um, that is, we're getting on for a big turtle there, and for most aquariums, she is really starting to get too big for that kind of environment. She's going to need a big indoor pond, or even better, an outdoor pond. Once she's big enough. Um, the, the older ones fare better outdoors if they've been brought up correctly with the correct amount of vegetation which helps their organs and bones etc to develop well uh, rather than too much protein. Um, too much protein in this species can cause fattiness of the liver and other organs which, which doesn't help them live a long and healthy life. So there we go, that, that's the sort of size you're looking at when they're older and even I still think this one's got some growing to do. Um, so those are your, your pond and river cooters. Um, there are There is another subspecies, or, or a group I should say, called the um, red belly cooters. Now, it consists of three different types. There's the Alabama red belly cooter, the northern, and the Florida. Now, bizarrely, they don't all have a red belly. The, the Florida red belly cooter in particular um, is more yellow, with tinges of orange, but they are related. The northern red belly cooter, however, really has some spectacular colours. I've got a young one I can show you. One second. So this is a, a very young northern red belly cooter, probably a year old. Um, they do have a dark carapace. There's, I don't know if the camera will pick it up today, but interspersed with some sort of red uh, horizontal lines there on the carapace. There's lovely black markings on the skin, um, lovely black skin with yellow markings. But it's the, the plastron on this species for me, really is something special. They really are a beautiful, vibrant, bright red. Um, they do, do pale as they grow, go through a growth spurt. With the correct diet and plenty of sun, that is a real deep red. Uh, and they are truly a beautiful species. Um, these grow very big, really, really big. We're talking sort of this size turtle. Um, but the beauty of the Sudanese ruby ventris, and it's obvious to see why they're called that, the ruby uh, is simply the red colour, ruby ventris, ruby, red. Um, they, they are from a more northerly climate in the United States, so these are the species that live further up towards New York, Michigan, those kind of places, and they tolerate much cooler temperatures than, than some of the other species. I wouldn't consider keeping a Florida red belly cooter outside in the UK, particularly over winter. Um, they're not built for it, they won't survive the winters, they don't hibernate well. This species, however, much, much better, much better suited uh, and can happily hibernate once they're of a good enough size, that they're strong enough um, with the right size pond in the UK. Um, so anyway, that's my little video about cooters. I hope you found it interesting. Over the next few months, I intend on making more of these sorts of videos. So we're going to be looking at diamondback terrapins, snapping turtles, box turtles, any species you can think of. We might even do some tortoises on there. Maybe we can get Jess to do a video or two. If you found this interesting, feel free to click on the subscribe button. Like, subscribe, drop any comments you want to ask me. I'll do my best to answer. Hopefully, we're going to be building up at the Turtle Emporium a bit of a, a YouTube channel, um, a bit more information, and we're going to look into how we care for different species, etc. And anything new or unusual I get, I'm, I'll, I will show off. So, uh, hit the like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.